I'll record, don't worry. Okay. Okay, Cluderic, go ahead. <coughs> Turn on the microphone, Cluderic. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I uh, please all the please all, all people to turn off the microphone, please. Okay, otherwise it will be impossible. Claudery, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so um uh, uh, my name is Claudia. I, 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 Parvo, I, I work for the research group, group for organic farming, and I, I will present you today some uh, case study about uh, of cover crops in uh, orchards in the sub Mediterranean zone. So, uh, the program of this presentation is uh, in uh, three points. Uh, first, I will explain why cover crops, uh, why growing cover crops in orchards, why it could be interesting. The second, I will uh, talk about the uh, expected effect of cover crops in orchard, and then I will finish with some example of uh, cover crops uh, fitted to the sub-Mediterranean zone. So just to show you what we will talk about in this presentation, uh, we will talk about cover crops. We can say also living mulch <laughs> when the crop is living and on the tree row. And I will not talk about the um, cover crops or living mulch uh, between the tree row or flower strip also, but of course cover crops can be a flower, but uh, it's just to so show you some example to, to be sure that we, are, uh, we understand uh, each other. <laughs> Um, the first question, perhaps you you wonder, is uh, why complicate la life with cover crops uh, on the tree row? So, as you probably already know, in most of the um, organic orchard system, uh, the soil management on the tree row is done by tillage. So, as you can see, we have advantage. Like um, the, this practice is well known, the ratio cost and efficiency is most of the time good and many different tools are available, but uh, we have also some drawbacks of this, uh, these techniques, such as the an energetic cost, um, the limiting uh, uh, shallow rooting so, uh, at the surface of the soil, and also different uh, disadvantage, like uh, the disruption of uh, biological and chemical properties, for example. On the other hand, we have the possibility to, to, uh, to, to grow cover crops on the tree row, which can uh, provide some uh, interesting uh, ecosystemic services, such as uh, the nitrogen supply, be an habitat for uh, biodiversity, uh, etc. So we will we will develop this more later. But what I want to, to stress is that uh, uh, nothing is perfect. Tillage is, could be interesting. Cover crops also are interested. So in, you have to choose the advantage and disadvantage you want to deal with. So this is a, the purpose of this presentation, to better know the advantage and disadvantage of, uh, of the cover crops. Um, the second thing, second thing I want to stress is uh, that we uh, the effect of uh, cover crops on the tree row are really uh, diverse. So we can have the introduction of uh, cover crops in a, in a system, for example, in an orchard, can have effect on different uh, ecosystemic services or different elements, different practices in the orchard. And we can have effect on, on uh, weed management, of course, but so see also soil structure, pest and disease control, et cetera. So before introducing cover crops, of course, you have to consider the, that some practice could be impacted. And first a slide here to, to show the effect of uh, possible effect of cover crops on the tree growth. So on these uh, two graphics, you have the evolution of the trunk uh, circumference or trunk diameter uh, during a time after um, the introduction of, um, of a cover crops. On the left side, the introduction was done in 2004. And on the right side, it was done since the beginning of the, um, of the plantation. So you can see that uh, we can have an effect sometimes on the right side of the, of the slide, you can see that uh, 
the introduction of cover crops decrease the trunk uh, diameter, so the growth of the crop, whereas uh, on the um, on the left side of the, the slide, you can see the graphic that uh, the evolution of the diameter trunk circumference, and you can see that the the effect of the cover crops of uh, clover cover crop is um, limited, and uh, we have only a, a significant effect only in one uh, for one year. So uh, usually, uh, when you we you set up a cover crop at uh, orchard plantation, you have really to be careful of the effect. But when it's done later, when the trees are more uh, bigger after three or four years, for example, the effect is usually really limited. Or in that case, for example, we can have a, sig a positive significant effect of the cover of the clover cover crop. Another important uh, issue also is the effect of the cover crops on yield and fruit size. So here it's again an example on pitch uh, with the introduction of uh, clover cover crops. The tree was planted in uh, 1999 and the cover crop was introduced in uh, 2004. And you can see that here for the yield and for the fruit size, fruit um, uh, the caliber, caliber. Uh, we can see that the impact of the cover crop is cover crop is really limited, and there is not um, a significant trend. And uh, we can see that it's really limited. And during time, so during the seven years uh, of this, uh, after um, the observation of uh, the introduction of the cover crop. Do we have some time? Uh, do we have an uh, impact on the on the fruit damage? It's not uh, really uh, evident, but uh, sometimes yes. Here, for example, in this example, again with um, the cover crop, the clover cover crops on peach, we can see that um, on damage concerning the damage on fruits at harvest we can have um, uh, a little bit less uh, insects ones on the fruits and uh, uh, on the clover cover crop treatments. So perhaps it's uh, due to less heroic damage in, the, in this uh, treatment, but uh, it's uh, to be uh, precise. And it also, of course, the, the effect can be different according to the cover crop species and, uh, and the, the crop. Another uh, well-known example of uh, the effect of um, cover crops, uh, unfortunately, it, it can be the, the presence of vole. Um, so in um, our region, vole can be really a big problem, especially for um, apple and uh, pear uh, crop, but also for stone fruit, it could be a, an important problem. And um, in this uh, publication, Sullivan and these, the co-authors have shown um, an effect of a, repellent, a small repellent effect of two uh, cover crops, the sweet wood rough and the creeping thyme, but it was op only observed in winter and not in summer. And most of the time, uh, the cover crops uh, has uh, uh, increased the presence of um, of vol. So if you want to introduce cover crops in system, you really have to consider this. And uh, it can be really a major limitation to the introduction of, of cover crops in, in, in orchards. Um, concerning the, the effect on, uh, on uh, fruits, and uh, we, we have uh, shown, uh, we have uh, demonstrated uh, some years ago that and the introduction of uh, clover, white clover cover crops uh, on peach can have a positive effect on the, um, on the brown rot on fruit. For example, in, in this table, we can see that uh, in 2004 and in 2007, um, the percentage of brown rot on fruit after five days after harvest was uh, decreased in the clover crop treatments. And we can here have a, a possible explanation of that. Here, this is the, 
two graphics uh, representing the water availability in the two treatments, clover, clover cover crops and tillage, and also the water uh, rain and irrigation, rainfall and irrigation. And we can see that uh, in spring, we have a, a drying out due to the white, white uh, clover growth. And after, before, during fruit ripening, uh, we can see that uh, we have not the same amplitude of variation of uh, between the two, uh, the two treatments. And uh, we have also done other observation and we have uh, found that the, um, in, uh, the, in, the um, high amplitude of variation of water in uh, the tillage treatment can have an effect of the micro in, uh, on the growth of the fruit. And then on the micro cracks, we can observe on the surface of the fruit. And on the, um, there is a buffer uh, effect of cover crops on uh, water availability which can have a positive effect because it uh, decreases the number of micro cracks on fruit and then decreases the infestation uh, of uh, brown rot uh, uh, on fruit. So it still needs to be uh, demonstrated step by step, but uh, it could be a positive indirect effect of cover crops. Here uh, you can see another uh, type of uh, effect of cover crops concerning the water inf infiltration rates. The graphics represent the inf infiltration uh, has a function uh, in time of time. And you can see, for example, on this example in um, mid-April that the speed, uh, the rotor infiltration rate is uh, more important in clover than in tillage. So it could be an interesting um, uh, thing. <laughs> um, cover crop can have also effect of on earth earthworm uh, population. And uh, here you can see uh, on this graphic, the mean earthworm density uh, on a clover cover crop. Uh, treatment and tillage. And you can see that um, there is a significant effect of the cover crop due, due to a higher endogeic and also main, um, mainly also epigeic um, here from. And epigeic, as you know, it's the um, a functional class of uh, here from that are, that are uh, more located at the top of the uh, surface of the soil, sorry. Of course, one of the expected effects is it's also concerning uh, nitrogen. And uh, here um, you can see on this um, graphic the evolution of uh, mineral nitrogen, uh, nitrates, and uh, ammoniac, ammoniacal form uh, on the two treatments. And uh, what is uh, interesting uh, to see is that um, the uh, we had a decrease by two uh, in uh, since uh, 2004. We have decreased by two uh, the uh, uh, input in uh, nitrogen in the only in the uh, clover cover crop treatments. And uh, besides that, we have still the same amount uh, uh, around the same amount of uh, uh, nitrogen available in both treatments. So, so it means that we have really a release of, the, of nit nitrogen uh, by uh, the clover cover crop during its growth or during its burying in the decomposition in the soil. Cover crops can have also an effect of uh, tree root distribution, but uh, unfortunately it's less documented and less uh, because it's more difficult to uh, to, to make some uh, some map of uh, of roots. Uh, here you can have a, a see an example uh, that and we can see a difference uh, between the two two treatments, but it's. Uh, most of the time difficult to, to conclude. <clears throat> Another um, last uh, slide concerning the expected effects of cover crops concern the biocontrol services. 
And here on this slide, you, you can have a, an example of uh, uh, the evolution of the ratio of uh, generalist arthropod predator uh, um, predator to uh, aphid. And uh, as you can see for, um, for aphid and uh, for oriental fruit moth on the right side. And uh, <clears throat> you can see that uh, the ratio is more important for uh, in the treatment with uh, cover crops, uh, ground cover composed of uh, clover again. And uh, here, and we have observed this uh, during uh, two years. So it was, it was done by a, a Chinese team in this um, trial. And uh, so here you can, we can have a positive effect of the white clover um, on, uh, on the biocontrol services and especially concerning aphids and the oriental fruit moth, which are two uh, important um, pests uh, for uh, peach. So I want now to give you some example of cover crops in a sub-Mediterranean zone. We have uh, assessed in, uh, at, uh, at Gram. Um, for example, here um, we have a, <clears throat> a table which represents the percentage, maximum uh, percentage of uh, ground cover of uh, different uh, cover crop species, which were assessed in uh, uh, apple orchards. Um, so you can see that, uh, for example, um, Dactylis or Achillea milfolium and Festuca ovina, they, they were really um, uh, interesting in terms of uh, ground cover because they can really um, reach, they can reach uh, almost 100% uh, of um, uh, soil occupation in the tree room. Uh, these graphics uh, represent uh, the ground cover occupation for uh, uh, tillage uh, treatment and the uh, white clover treatment. And it's uh, just to illustrate the evolution of uh, bare soil, weed, and white clover, uh, this, the percentage of these three, uh, three elements uh, uh, at the, uh, in the tree row. And as you can see, we had a, a very important decrease of the white clover here uh, uh, percentage uh, 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 on the soil um, during um, during uh, summer, and it was due to, it, it was due to um, a short shredding of this uh, cover crop. So. It's really important uh, when you want to um, introduce cover crops in a system to think about the management of these uh, cover crops. And some of them, they are not, um, they are very susceptible to uh, shredding. So you can really take care of that. And uh, it also, of course, depends on the, of the season. The impact could be really uh, important and sometimes you have a negative effect. Um, I talk uh, mainly about uh, cover crops uh, as a standalone, but of course we can mix them and it's uh, most of the time it's really interesting as you can see, as you will see. So here we have uh, in a uh, trial, we have assessed during several um, years, the uh, a mixture of leguminous and graminous uh, species. Uh, we have uh, uh, assessed different kind of uh, different species of uh, of cover crops uh, of cover crops, sorry, such as uh, trifolium, medicago, and also festuca, uh, different species of festuca, and also a mixture uh, of uh, different of uh, fifteen uh, different uh, species, uh, such as uh, medicago, lotus, trifolium, antilles, and etc. So I just want to, 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 to focus on some results. Um, here you can see uh, on this slide the evolution of the ground cover for two uh, clover uh, species. Um, one uh, red clover, uh, Trifolium rubra, and uh, the white clover, Trifolium repens. 
So you can see that um, we had uh, during these two years of observation, uh, at the beginning of the trial, we had a really important uh, co covering um, of uh, this uh, of the red white clover. And uh, the red white clover was most more covering soil than the white one. <clears throat> and what is interesting to, to, to show also is to, to see that the interest of the mixture uh, for red clover crop, for, for red clover crop, um, despite a lower seeding rate than red clover uh, alone. So when sometimes when you have a positive effect of mixture and when you mix them, uh, you, you have a better result with uh, another, when you mix with another species and when you use a lower rate, um, a lower um, seeding rate uh, density. Uh, you can see here the evolution of uh, the um, ground cover, uh, evolution of uh, two Festuca species. So as you can see, the the, um, it, there is a, a slow establishment of the of these two species. Um, the soil covering effect it could be really nice because you have very dense clod on the soil, and which can uh, um, provide which can uh, avoid the the growth of uh, weed in some case. So it's uh, it could be really interesting, and it's um, festuca. Um, are more uh, interesting in mixture than in um, alone because, because of their slow establishment. So at the beginning, you need to have other species, otherwise you will have um, uh, uh, a high development of, uh, of other species, uh, weed and so on. Uh, another example here of um, the ground evolution of cover crops uh, it was done on uh, 20 different uh, cover crop species so we have um, distinguished uh, after four years of observation we have distinguished different uh, pattern of uh, of behavior of the of the plant here for example you can see that um, with lobularia maritima or with uh, Ono Brickis, with his Saint Foin, <laughs> we have a, a quick installation, but also it quickly disappears uh, after one or two years. For Artemisia or for Centaurea, we have a development which is uh, late. So you have really to, to wait until uh, the uh, soil occupation uh, is uh, important. And for other species uh, such as Agrostis, uh, Le Contemon, or Achillea, for example, uh, we had a quick installation and um, uh, the, the ground cover was, not, was important because it was uh, um, ranging from, it, it ranged from the 50 to 85% on, on, on the soil surface. So uh, last uh, slide, I just want to show you here uh, a kind of, um, of summarize that we can uh, do after this kind of trial. So here uh, for uh, several, several uh, crop, uh, several species, we have identified uh, different uh, characteristics in terms of uh, development rate, summer soil uh, recovery or, and winter soil recovery, the steadiness, the height of the flower, the um, first year of flowering, etc., and also the effect of um, uh, the cover crop on soil uh, microbial biomass here from abundance and arthropods diversity. So you can see that uh, we have, um, we have not found the perfect um, uh, species for a cover crop. So it really depends uh, of uh, what you expect has services and uh, your climate, of course. So to, to conclude uh, this presentation, uh, in this presentation, I just wanted to show that um, we can have many potential effects of cover crops. So I've tried to illustrate uh, this uh, different uh, potential effects yeah, that you can expect or, or not sometimes, such as uh, the one for ball. 
And um, the development of uh, cover crops, of course, as you can imagine, depends really on me, many factors. So the extrapolation of uh, to other contexts, to other kind of con uh, orchards or to other climates also is, um, sorry, is uh, could be really tricky or difficult. And um, I uh, suggest you really to, to see uh, your local resources that you can have because um, there is a really a growing interest for cover crops in uh, orchards in, uh, in many different countries. But uh, very, there is not so many data that are published in scientific literature, but many data or may, many uh, interesting experiences uh, are sometimes related in gray literature. So you can also find uh, interesting data in uh, the experience of uh, in different uh, experience, uh, local experience. And the last thing, if you want to introduce uh, cover crops, is uh, really to take care of uh, of voles. If you have voles in your uh, in your um, area, because it could be really a, a big uh, issue to deal with. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Kurt Lerik. Actually, you made it according to the program. If you can unshare just your presentation, and then we will. Uh, to unshare. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, then we go to, uh, in, it's up, you need to go up. Yes, and click on the uh, unshare. Okay, I did it. Okay. Don't worry. Okay, I did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Michael will present us what are the outcomes, let's say, of the Domino project, which was the project uh, you can start Michael, to share the screen. In the meantime, uh, it was a project that just ended in uh, actually a few months ago uh, under the Core Organic program, and um, they were involved. Uh, several partners from uh, France, from, uh, from Poland, uh, from uh, Germany, from Italy, and from Switzerland. And I think that uh, Michael will present kind of general lessons that we have learned in a more northern climate uh, uh, compared to what the Claude represents. Michael, the floor is yours. So can you hear me and see the presentation? Yes, in, we see and hear. Presentation mode, is it fine? Yes, 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 it's fine. Okay, oh no. Then uh, um, also welcome again from my side. So in my presentation, I will give you some information about um, living mulches in apple orchards and the lessons learned from the core organic project, Domino. And the uh, results that I will show you are um, results from the whole project consortium. So also many thanks to all the, the other partners who uh, contributed to this presentation. So now I try to go to the next slide. So perfect. So uh, the aim of the project Domino was to reduce external inputs in intensive organic fruit orchards. So for pest control, but also for fertilization, also to improve the, the overall productivity and also the sustainability of this agroecosystem. And this was done by three different uh, main uh, points. So first was to use and to introduce living mulches in the tree row. So this is uh, where I'm going more in detail in my presentation today. Another important point was also to optimize the fertilization strategies using regionally available recycling fertilizers, but also to use uh, intercrops to improve the nutrient balances and also the ecosystem services. And then the last point was also to test innovative coring system as physical barriers to reduce uh, external inputs by uh, direct plant protection. And here on the right, you can see some images from living mulches and here also from different fertilizers that were tested. So there were some incubation trials, some pot trials, but also some field trials on the, in different countries of the project partners. 
And on the bottom, you can see an image um, of the cover trial that we did at Feeble in Switzerland. So this uh, project uh, was coordinated by the University of Ancona by Professor David Deneri. And we had partners from, from Italy, from Bulgaria, Poland, uh, Switzerland, Germany, but also France, and also different associations from these um, countries were involved in the whole project. So current organic production systems are often concerned with the so-called conventionalization. So with the widespread use of external inputs, they are often produced also very far from the farm. And this uh, concerns the plant protection products, but also fertilizers that are used, and uh, of course also fuel and other energy sources. And um, we can imagine to redesign the farming systems to go towards a cultivated agroecosystem, which uh, tries to mimic uh, also the nature. So by growing perennial or also temporary herbaceous species on the zones, of the orchards or also vineyards in the project that are at the moment currently not used for this. So this means between the rows, but in the plant row. And the, the idea is that this um, species will also serve as components of a global production system. So they provide ecosystem service to the main crop. Uh, this is in terms of soil fertility, also plant protection or what also um, we looked at was the idea of using it as a cash crop so for an additional income so you can see here on the image on the left hand side uh, like the the production system look at the moment and this was so the idea of our project so the results that they will uh, present now they were performed in uh, the different countries so you can see here an overview so we had many different um, climatic areas and also different topographic um, situations. So it was quite a diverse um, situations where these trials uh, were done. So in total, 44 herbaceous uh, plant species were tested to be used on the planted rows. So with the primary goal to provide a sustainable alternative um, to the practice of row weeding by tillage that is uh, done uh, mainly so and the plants they were either seeded or they were um, planted as seedlings so this was done manually and uh, the plants they were purchased from from local nurseries or they were directly collected in a local environment uh, to minimize their potential negative impact on the main crop uh, due to competition some species were chosen for their potential as nitrogen source so we tested different uh, legume species uh, like Trifolium repens, but also Medicaco sativa. Or other species they were tested mainly because of their low growing um, habits. So uh, for example, in Switzerland and also in other countries, we tested different uh, Hiratium species. <laughs> um, and also official or eatable crops were tested. So with a marketing perspective, or also to, to compensate the competition with the perennial crop by adding an additional value. So here, just uh, two examples that were tested by different partners. So as official crops, uh, mint was tested by many partners, or also time. And also edible crops were tested. So here the example of pumpkin and then another um, species was that was tested was a uh, wild strawberry species. So this was tested by most of uh, the partners. It was quite an, an interesting species. So what were the main learnings of this work? So we can say that first uh, result showed that there is no uh, herbaceous species that can be tested and can be proposed as a a turnkey solution, a so-called turnkey solution to the farmer because of the really great uh, variability of the adaptation to the ecosystem of the planted row. So now I will go a little bit more in detail and show you some results um, from uh, different partners. So the first one is from, from France. So the species from the genus Menta, 
this uh, seems to be rather um, ubiquitous plant, so it seems to be able to grow uh, easily in a wide range of different situations. And at the contrary, some clover cultivars, they don't support the water dress. And also uh, for strawberry species, we saw that they require a lot of um, rain, especially in the summer. And this is really important to note that the adaptation of the species to the local um, conditions of the orchards or the, the vineyard has to be verified on the tree row and not only um, at the original scale. And to illustrate this, you can have a look on, on these um, pictures here. So this was Menta that was uh, tested in a French um, trial. So in the open field, it, they really had a good uh, establishment. And then here on the right hand side, you can see the picture um, when it was uh, tested in the tree row with a really low and um, bad establishment. The second point is that using species taken from the local biodiversity provides uh, significant advantages uh, in terms of plant resilience, but also on soil cover ability. So here on the left, uh, the case of the plant um, strawberries that were taken in the nature and then uh, transplanted in vineyard. This was quite a successful uh, story. And on the right hand side here, you can see a potentilla. So this was a trial that we have done at Fiebel in Switzerland. This is a um, plant species that is uh, already present. So we transplanted it in the uh, tree row and you can see there is quite a good um, establishment of this um, plant species. And now on the left, you can also see a local um, clone of Gallium album. This was uh, done at the research institute in Limburg and also there in, uh, in apple orchards, they had quite some good um, results. But it's also important to stress that whether the plants are local or purchased from nurseries without um, additional weeding control measures during the first one or even two uh, seasons, and perhaps even longer, most of these species have great difficulty to compete on their own with the weeds. And this was uh, especially um, we realized this for, for the summer weeds. So it was um, the same situation for, for different um, project partners. Um, for example, here you can see on the picture um, one um, example that we have done at Switzerland. So uh, Hiratium species, so it looks really nice in May, but then in September it was overgrown uh, by another plant species. Um, and here at the contrary, a French experiment where um, another Hiratium species was tested. This was planted at the same density as we did in Switzerland. And this was um, without any weeding. And you can see that um, the development was not really good. Maybe I have to go back to the slide before. Here I have to mention that we, uh, we did some manual weeding. Therefore, it really looks like this. So without the manual weeding, the situation would also have been maybe a little bit different. And some of the tested um, species, they also proved to have a positive uh, impact on antagonists uh, of mites, aphids, and also um, nematodes. And here you can see, um, for example, in this French experiment uh, where mint was grown on the rose, a significantly higher level of antagonist mite was recorded on the leaves of apple trees uh, in June compared um, to the tree row managed by mechanical weeding. So this was uh, the yellow line and here with um, the cover crops, it was uh, like this. Now I move to another um, trial that was done at Inhort. So interesting results were also observed on the below ground interactions of the root system of some um, species. So with the root system of the trees when they were grown together. Here, um, mint and alchemilla was used as model uh, plants and the tree root density was significantly higher uh, when these species were associated with apple trees in the row compared to the rows that were managed uh, only by mechanical weeding. Uh, and although uh, these plants covers had a higher biomass than the spontaneous flora of the control, the, the nutrient content of the apple leaves 
were at the similar uh, level. And this um, suggests that the association with this species may optimize the nutrient uptake from the soil by the trees possible because uh, of exudates released from the roots of these plants, uh, which lead to, to changes in soil microbiota, or maybe also, uh, maybe I can also take the point that Claude Eric was mentioning. So maybe also because uh, maybe the, there was some kind of a buffering of the water and then also by this, uh, the nutrient uptake um, could be better. Um, yeah, now also another point that we have heard already in the presentation before. Um, indeed, but in these cases where the ground cover species were poorly established and overgrown by weeds, um, we could uh, see significant elite yield losses. They were observed uh, in this um, French experiment. And there were also some uh, problems with rodents and also with some um, deer damage. And uh, like here in this French experiment, using mint, um, Pilocella or microclover on the rows, um, we had 20% yield losses in the first year. And also this uh, evidence of damage by wild fauna, which leads to tree mortality in the second year. So it's a little bit the same um, situation that we had heard in the presentation before. Um, and depending on the labor costs applied in the different European countries, um, which also influences, of course, the cost of the plants, um, establishing uh, selected herbaceous species on the rows of vineyard or in orchards can be uh, very expensive. And here, the French partner, they did a calculation of the, the whole investment for the machine, for the people, and for the plant material. And they uh, had come to a total of 20, 5,000 euros per hectare of orchard. So it's um, quite a high amount of money. Um, yeah, and actually the, the results in this trial was not, not really good. So some recommendations can be given. So first, in most cases, using ground cover species on the tree rows uh, cannot be considered as an economically um, sustainable alternative to the mechanical weeding that is uh, currently mostly done in organic orchards. And if the fruit growers want to try this technique, it's really recommended to start testing it, uh, the ground cover in, in small areas to, to verify the adaptation to the local climate conditions before uh, to start using these um, cover crops on a large scale. And now I want to um, move to the second topic, um, to the cash crops. So in uh, suitable conditions, strawberries, official and also aromatic species and vegetable like pumpkins, they were identified as possible interesting options to provide an additional income. So here, for example, we have the uh, wild strawberry, different uh, Fragaria vesca. This was done in a German trial. And um, here we also have um, pumpkin that were tested in a Polish trial. And here uh, menta, this was tested by also many different partners here. On this image, you can see the situation, how it was in uh, the trial in Germany. Um, and we can say that this has some interest, but first uh, using species already cultivated so on a relatively large scale, this could give a chance to find the plants easily at, and also at lower prices than using um, botanical plants like the Herasium species that I have mentioned before. And if these plants succeed in adapting to the tree rows, um, they could also give some significant production each year. But there are also some constraints. So first, um, always verify their adaptation to the local conditions of the tree row, as I have shown in some ex um, examples before. And I think the, the most important point is that the no pesticide spray has to be applied to the orchard and especially if the chosen species are herbal plants. And uh, this can be a very um, big constraint. So now I would like to give some suggestions. Um, 
such secondary crops, they can be a good option in case of uh, direct farm sales or self-harvest on farm by the customers directly. And beyond the income from the sale of these products, they can also provide an added value. This is in terms of the customer's perception of the farm and also does the retention and also the publicity. And that probably even if such crops, um, they are only planted on a small area of the farm. And now I would also mention uh, to, a, to a brochure that was uh, done in the project Core Organic uh, Domino. So one part of this uh, brochure is also with the lessons learned and also some recommendations for the fruit growers. So you can find some, some tables with the species that were tested by the different partners, but also then there are the pros and cons and maybe some uh, special recommendations for the farmers. So this is in this um, document here. Yeah, and with this, I finish my presentation and I thank you for your attention. And I think now uh, we have enough time to discuss your questions and maybe you, you can also give some remarks. Maybe you have some own experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Now, uh, if you can, okay, maybe I'll unshare. Okay, you did it, great. Uh, so we can uh, open the discussion. I think we have uh, almost one hour uh, to discuss. And I, I'd like to start, let's say, the discussion. Uh, so with the two, let's say, recommendations for those that want to ask, just to turn on also the video so that we can see who's talking. Uh, and then, and then of course, uh, turn on and off the, the microphone. So this is one thing. Now, I'd like to start with the, with the, hi, Michelle, uh, from, from uh, East Molling. Uh, you like to, to talk and ask a question because otherwise I will point some issues. Uh, that's fine, okay. Uh, some issues that I think uh, came out uh, from, from the two presentations, meaning, I mean, the, the general, uh, which I think it's a kind of a very general uh, uh, outcome for, whichever uh, new, uh, say, cultivation system or new practice that we introduce in, in the orchard uh, applies, uh, is that uh, we need to adapt the, the idea, the concept of the practice to the, specific, uh, uh, to the specificity of the local condition. So the orchard, the, the management of the orchard, the, the place where the orchard is, the, it is and, and so on. So this is, I think, is the first. Uh, I would say conclusion that we can that we can have, and from the other side, uh, I think that uh, sometimes uh, we need to be a little bit. Uh, I would not say flexible only, but uh, you know, thinking a little bit further uh, because um, we can really actually uh, exploit some uh, uh, let's say some negative points that were mentioned by, by, by both uh, Clauderic and Michael, uh, for example, for the, the, the effect of the living mulches on the plant growth uh, or um, for the voles uh, and so on, to, 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 to see them in a different way. Because maybe, for example, the effect on the plant growth, uh, uh, it's a benefit if we want to apply. If, so it's just a matter of, uh, starting the orchard with the rootstock that is a little bit more vigorous, uh, which then it's, uh, it gives uh, to, the, to, the, to the plants uh, a different, uh, let's say, uh, different kinds of benefits, particularly in organic farming, of course, you know, because they can go grow deeper and particularly in some soils that maybe are not so fertile um, and, and benefit for the reduction that we have uh, in, the, in the, the plant growth uh, due to the, to the cover crop, which then could also increase the, the fertility of the soil, as we have seen, I mean, uh, generally speaking, when we think about as a fertility as the, let's say, content in, in uh, nutrient elements, but not only because it's also related. I think that it's uh, clear that uh, whenever we see 
particularly for the nitrogen, for example, content in the soil, uh, it's related also with the uh, microbial activity in the soil. So that's, that's also the capacity of, of the, the biological, so-called so -called biological fertility. Uh, then I think that also what Michael was presenting, uh, I, I feel it because I was also taking part of the project. So we also carried out in Poland uh, several trials. And actually the outcome was not so, let's say, ne negative in the sense that we had more positive e effects than, than negative. And particularly at, when working with the farmers, because actually that was also the case in our case. Um, so, but also in that specific uh, uh, aspect, uh, again, we need to adapt uh, as it was shown uh, to the specificity of the farm approach. Uh, I mean, the farmer approach in, in growing his orchard, because uh, for example, when it comes to, I mean, Michael was presenting about the, 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 the problem of the pesticide residues and, and the strawberries, for example, the, the, the wild strawberries that were grown. Now we had uh, from the, the partner in, in Italy, in uh, Marche, uh, we were actually in this uh, farm uh, that is growing uh, it as a vineyard. And they started uh, as normal it is, you know, for, for a project, you know, with a few uh, meters, let's say 100 meters of the, the vineyard uh, uh, growing these uh, wild uh, strawberries. And now they have all the six hectares that are grown in this way, because they found that actually there is a, a benefit uh, from the sides of, of uh, controlling the weeds, but also a benefit in getting maybe a little bit of, of, this, uh, uh, of the fruits, but there is also a benefit in uh, the, the perception of the, uh, of the consumers that are coming to the farmer to, to purchase the wine that they are producing. And they see, for example, in the period when there are the flowers, uh, there is also, there are the fruits and all these things. It's, it's a, a, a perception of, uh, what we say as a, an ecosystem service, uh, it's the aesthetics of the of the of the orchard, or in this case of the of the vineyard, uh, which actually we also have um, analyzed in this way with the survey with the project, and it came out that actually this is an aspect very much uh, frequently kind of horizontal in a way that uh, uh, in all the countries we have carried out the the, the analysis, the questionnaire asking the the people, farmers or advisors, whether uh, which kind of uh, uh, ecosystem services they were thinking could be positively affected by the, such kind of innovation. Uh, one, the, the, the aesthetic was uh, one generally uh, appraised as a, a positive one. But I don't want to take more. These are just points for, for the discussion and also about the costs, because also for the costs, uh, I think we cannot focus only on uh, uh, on the French uh, uh, assessment because in Poland, for example, we had a uh, very interesting uh, positive effect actually. And what was interesting was that, uh, for example, in case of mint, where we had the, the highest production of let's say secondary uh, cash crop, uh, the 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 positive effect was not so. Uh, positive as it was, for example, with the Alkenilla, uh, because there is a higher cost for, for keeping the, the orchard and so on, uh, while with the Alkenilla, there was a lower and the, the price of the product is higher and with less problems also when it comes to the pesticides uh, residues and so on. So if anybody wants to, to ask questions or to comment, you are welcome. Michelle, the floor is yours. Uh, of course, I have a question. Um, so yeah, thank you. It's really interesting, and it's it's nice to see um, the results of actually putting some of these cover crops in the tree row. I guess my question is: is Hello. is can we be a bit more clever on how we manage them in mm -hmm. the tree row so that they don't impact the tree health so much? So could we, for example, be sowing things that are beneficial at certain times of the year and then 
and then going through and mechanically weeding them when tree demand is higher. Michael, Roderick, do you want to answer? Just turn on the microphone, Roderick. Yes. Sorry, Michael. Uh, can you uh, ask again your, your question? No, the, the, the question? The question is whether there is uh, any possibility to choose different kinds of, uh, of plants to use as uh, living mulch or cover crops that will hurt less, let's say, the, I mean, will hit less from the pest point of view, if I understood correctly. Um, but, but then it, because of some of the negative impacts on tree health, can we then manage those plants within the tree row to maybe mechanically weed them when the, the tree demand is high for water and nutrients? So they're only there at um, very restricted times of the year, maybe. So I think this, this is a, another approach that we also tested. So it is more than because the, the results that I showed were really the, the idea of a permanent living mulch. But what we also tested, for example, to, to sow the peas. So this was beside the, the tree row and then to let them grow for some wee, weeks and then to incorporate it uh, also by mechanical weeding, also to have some additional nutrients for, for the trees. Yeah, this was done in spring yeah, when there is a high demand, for example, for nitrogen. But I don't know if um, actually in our projects, we didn't test it with this uh, the living mulch to remove them after some short period. And I don't, also don't know if maybe Claude, if you have some, some experience with this. We have already, uh, it's okay. Yes. <clears throat> we have uh, already assessed the uh, interest of, uh, of uh, leguminous uh, green uh, cover crop <laughs> of leguminous uh, on the tree row uh, since uh, at the beginning of the plantation. And, um, and we uh, each uh, spring, we, uh, or, uh, we buried the um, cover crop in copper in the in the soil and try to see the beneficial effects. So at the, the first year, it was uh, uh, difficult. The decomposition of the um, leguminous was not so good. So it was difficult. So we have the next uh, year, it was be better. And we have seen a, a positive uh, effect after two, uh, three years. Uh, but it um, needs to be confirmed. And it's uh, it was a... Um, it, it was a, an experimentation, so it was possible to, we have, a, in fact, a grow the um, a leguminous before the plantation, and we have planted the tree in uh, the, the leguminous, in uh, Fabacea or other leguminous. And um, it was uh, not easy to, to do that. So for, for an ex, from an experimental point of view, it was possible, but for practices, it still need to be uh, developed to see if it uh, can be uh, extrapolated for the condition. Now, if, we, if I can add uh, one comment, let's say on that, because actually when uh, you, Claude Rigg, was were mentioning about the, the, these uh, trials that, uh, that uh, Sullivan was, uh, you know, and the vol damage that you were mentioning, so, and actually you said that, you know, the, 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 the damage during winter time is reduced, but it is increased in springtime, no? So that, so maybe it's exactly what Michelle is also thinking about. So why don't we can eventually, I mean, it's a matter of selecting the, the correct species that we need to use as a, as a cover crop or, or living mulch. So to have them cut when it is the worst period for, for the voles, uh, Damage so that, that there is a, a lower uh, it, there is a lower risk for this kind of damage. But uh, if I come also to the to the aspects of the plant protection, because also could be also that I mean, the idea we had uh, in Poland was actually uh, to to try different kind of species for different purposes. So we had some species that we thought could be useful also for for uh, to for as a plant to to let's say reduce the, 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 the risk of damage from, from, from different kinds of pests. And actually we thought about mint for that specific purpose because of the uh, essential oil. When you were entering into the, into the field, uh, you, know, you could really feel 
the, the, the smell of the, of the mint, okay, in that. Uh, we, tra we tested also other plants. And, and in some cases, I mean, the, the results are not conclusive because, you know, it's not uh, enough time. And, uh, but we are continuing this uh, uh, with, the, with the species like Alchemilla and with also the Nasturtium, for example, uh, because in some cases we found a decrease actually in the, for example, in one year there was a decrease in the aphids, in another year there was a decrease in the, in the mites, and, so the, and, and then we found an increase in the predatory mites, which, re, which was then found in the next year, it was not so increased, but because there were not so many, not so many uh, mites to be predated. Uh, so I think that actually the, the um, very interesting because we have always uh, considered them separately, but uh, what the, the, in the, the Chinese uh, uh, approach that, that Crowder it was present, you know, about the ratio, so it's the ratio between the predators and the, uh, the pest would be maybe more interesting to really assess if there is any, any effect. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a system approach. We, it's always uh, uh, that they need to really select somehow what could, I mean, the, the, the species that could be really uh, utilized, taking into consideration also the different aspects. But I think that, that as also was pointed out, there is no unique, let's say, uh, solution to, to this always must be somehow adapted also to the problems that are found in the farm. Anybody else? I think it was Ludek was before was. Hello, uh, could I ask something, please? Of course, of course, of course. Yeah, my name is Ludek Lanyar. I'm from Czech Republic. Uh, and we would like to start to work with, let's say, sandwich system. And uh, we are thinking about uh, the plants, uh, which would be, let's say, suitable for the middle strip. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I saw that on most of your uh, presentations, you work, let's say, in less dense uh, orchards with a lot of uh, sun and so on. But we expect that, uh, yeah, uh, in some uh, more closed orchards, more in, let's say, uh, uh, the orchards which are, um, uh, how to say, more darker, you know, uh, below the trees, uh, what would be uh, actually um, the, the species which can withstand this more darker uh, conditions, if you, if you have some, uh, some experience with let's say, darker conditions with, with the species, if clover will, will uh, work or fescue and these species. Michael, maybe, maybe Michael, because he is from Switzerland, you know, this is the sandwich is the Swiss method, <laughs> right? Or Cloderic, if you want to go ahead. <laughs> so, so Ludek, I didn't get the point really. So you, you are also working in quite dense planted um, apple or fruit orchards. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I am not focused, let's say, on organic production, but really on uh, intensified uh, production, uh, conventional. Uh, but of course, we are, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we are uh, now thinking about how to rationalize uh, the use of uh, soil cultivation below the trees. Uh, and uh, yeah, we saw that the sandwich system could be definitely the, the solution, uh, combining, let's say, the advantages or decreasing the disadvantages of uh, soil cultivation. So, but we know that the, the situation below the trees, or when they are, uh, let's say, fulfilled, the, the, the canopy is finished, that the conditions below the trees is quite, quite dark. You know, there is uh, yeah, not much of, of, of sun during the day. So my question is, uh, if you think uh, that some species that you worked with uh, could withstand these conditions well, I mean, the establishment and also to withstand them for more years. 
So maybe just some information about the trial within the Domino project. We did it with the rather young um, apple trees, and uh, there there was uh, I think a lot a lot of light coming down um, to the tree row. But what we observed, for example, for this uh, wild strawberry, when they were in a situation where not a lot of light was coming down, I think the establishment was not really good. So, for example, so mm -hmm. for for our situation, I wouldn't recommend uh, the wild strawberries to to plant it there when you have really high density canopy. And uh, I could also uh, give you the, the the brochure. So there we also have some recommendations, but actually it's from our trials. I cannot give you some some good advice. I don't know if Cloderic or Elicho, I think you also worked in a quite old orchard, yes. more or less. Cloderic, go ahead, you first. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's difficult to extrapolate our results, but uh, in my last uh, slides, I presented some uh, results concerning the uh, different behavior of, uh, of uh, cover crop species. And the, the trial was realized near um, a very big uh, hedgerow. And uh, so the, there is not so much light. And in our condition, we have a good um, ground cover with uh, graminerus such as agrostis, for example, and uh, agrostis tolonifera. And also we had also good result with alchemia, um, um, Alchemia milfolium, or uh, on on the sun or in the in the shadow, it was the same, for example. But it's uh, and also um, uh, with uh, le contemum, le contemum is uh, marguerite, le contemum vulgare. We had ve um, very nice uh, ground cover, but you if it's uh, uh, you have also to take care of the height of the cover crops because sometimes uh, we don't want to have too, um, the, that the height of the cover crop is not too big because after you can have a, a bridge between the soil and the trunk or on the branch and you can have some, um, for example, on stone fruit, but perhaps you are not concerned, but on stone fruit we have a, important uh, damage uh, uh, caused by uh, hair rigs. Hair rigs are really uh, nice for uh, apple because they, uh, they can be a beneficial insect, but for stone fruit, they can uh, hit uh, the fruit. And uh, for example, in our orchards, we try to avoid bridge, bridge between the, co the cover crops uh, itself and the crop, because otherwise you have many hair rigs that can reach the tree and uh, cause some damage. So it's just an example. But after, I think the, the best recommendation was done by uh, Mikhail concerning you have to, it's the best way is to also to, 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 to make a, a small trial in your orchard <laughs> with several plants and to, to see what uh, could be the best because uh, extrapolation is really difficult. It depends on the soil, if it's sandy or not. It, it, it will depend if you, um, which amount of water do you apply uh, irrigation. So. <laughs> okay. Michelle, mm -hmm. you want to say something on this? Otherwise, I can also then. Yes. Um, yeah, it was just a quick comment. I was interested in your um, conclusion on earwigs because we're actually finding over the last five years or so, we're getting reductions in earwig numbers in pear orchards where we've implemented a more ecologically kind of kind um, floral management so that's either with cover crops or letting the alleyway um, herbs and grasses grow and I'm not quite sure whether that's a result of changing the ecology of the orchard so maybe they're finding alternative food sources in the in the alleyways and in in the herb layer and they're not so interested in the trees which is a big problem for pear growers because of pear psyllid or whether it's a change in the chemistry that we're using. So we don't have really very many insecticides left. Um, although we are using spirotetramat um, a little bit for control of uh, area, uh, of mites and pear sucker and um, various other things. So 
it's quite interesting when we make these changes we can I think sometimes we can change the whole ecology of the orchard and we might have some unforeseen consequences of that so I'm not quite sure what the cause is but I think it's something we probably need to look into but you're saying that you actually get more earwigs when you're using these cover crops uh, we have not assessed if we are more earwig or not but uh, when you have when you have um, uh, you can have um, when you have a, a cover crop on the tree row you have a, a possible bridge between the the cover crop and the tree because uh, here we they can uh, um, climb on the <laughs> on the cover cro cover crop if it's uh, the height is important for example for le country mom or uh, means if you have a high stem and uh, you can have um, you can uh, in that case you can increase the number of uh, hearing uh, in, in the tree in the canopy of the tree and when the summer is uh, dry in mediterranean condition the hearing they don't find uh, food uh, during uh, summer and they find food in the tree so they climb in they want to climb in the tree so for this we we use a glue we put a glue on the trunk but uh, if you have a cover crop with, which, which is quite high and you have a bridge between the soil and the, the, the tree, there is no effect of the glue. So, but of, I imagine it's not a problem on apple uh, in the northern part of Europe, of course. But in, on stone, in peach in uh, South France, it's a pro it could be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, we've got the opposite. It's a problem if we lose our earwigs, which seems to be happening at the moment with our more ecologically friendly but orchard management where the earwig numbers seem to be declining but we don't know the reason for that hmm. Interesting. now if i can uh, uh, add a little information to about ludek you know that was asking uh, i think that when you want to apply this system in your let's say convention you know because you know even in convention uh, you, you should uh, have integrated pest management anyway you know uh, you need to think uh, what is your real goal. So what do you want to achieve with this system? Because if you want to increase, for example, the, the, the availability of nitrogen, then you use something. If you want to reduce the wheat uh, uh, competition, then you can use something else. Now, uh, we had uh, a couple of uh, trials also with the farmers in very I mean, not very old, but very, very well and big uh, uh, trees. In one case, we had, for example, a, even the, a, two trees uh, on one row. So it's a kind of double system, okay? And the other one was uh, uh, quite very, very big, uh, big trees. I think uh, 12, 14 years old. So they were very covering very much uh, also the the soil. So it was a very shadowy environment on the bottom of the of the tree. We, we tried to plant because we asked, uh, uh, so we, we went to, to a farmer that, that is producing, producing these uh, uh, herbal plants and asking him, what can we use in, in an in a orchard environment where we are expecting actually some shadowy environment on the, on the bottom of the, I mean, on the tree row, okay? And then he said, okay, we can try some species that are growing in the wood. So there are some species that are growing. Then we tested a couple of them in both of the farms and none of them was successful in establishing. For one of them, it was not successful at all anywhere. So even in the, in the light. So that, that was, it's a problem of the soil, meaning that we believe it's a problem of uh, a, 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 this species requires a soil that is most, more acidic because it's, uh, it's coming also from, from the forest and so on. But, but from the other species that we were using in, in, in other environments, so when the tree was not so big, still it was already eight year old, so that was already doing some shadow. So it established very well. So what, is, what would be my, let's say, suggestion? We are now also uh, testing the same approach in another farm for demonstration purposes, they, we were asked by the, the, the uh, producers association to have these trials with them, 
okay, because they are interested in the, in the approach. So my suggestion would be that you establish the system when you are planting, or I mean, just a couple of, after the plants have two years or three years, so that they have enough light in order to establish well. And then when the, when it grows, of course you need to have a, a species that is uh, somehow that they resistant to to a shadowy environment, uh, and you need to check that. But for example. The strawberries, stro the, these wild strawberries, okay, they are normally also grown in uh, uh, in the shadow because they grow in the, in the forest. No, so you go to the wood and you find them there. I mean, they do not have uh, much much light. And actually, in our trials, this uh, this wild strawberry was very well growing. It requires a little bit of help at the beginning, as it was also mentioned by by Michael. No, the, the first year mainly. Uh, you need you need to really uh, do some weed uh, uh, control, but you can let's say uh, compensate this if you increase the amount of uh, of plants that you are planting, or if you plant at the beginning, but you will have a let's say very very uh, intensive uh, orchard, so the plants will be uh, one meter and a half or two meters something like that. But you can start near the, the, the tree trunk, which is actually the part that is mostly difficult to be controlled even or even with tillage, you know, because there is always a problem that, uh, that, uh, that uh, weeds are growing there and you can control in between the two trees, okay? So you start with that and then you go ahead and they will, in the second year, we, we, we were really, because uh, even in your conditions, I mean, in our conditions, it took, uh, a year and a half to have the full, uh, the full uh, tree row completely covered by these uh, uh, white strawberries. Okay, so and white strawberries, why we were we were thinking and using that? Okay, we learned from the Italians, but but the idea is I think very interesting because it's a, a perennial plant, so you don't need to see it every every year from one side. So it is it is also. Uh, uh, Stoloniferous plants, so it grows very well. And actually, you will have then to eventually control the growth when the plant grows to the to the alleyways, okay? Because because it can grow also on that side. And actually, you could they, they have been finding and and uh, let's say developing a kind of uh, uh, tool that is applied to the to the, the normal machine that is cutting. The, the stolons, okay. So and these stolons actually are then used to replant again, so to increase the the, the density wherever it is necessary. So that that could be. But definitely, you need to decide from the beginning what is the goal that you want to achieve. Okay, if it is with control or if you want to have nutrient uh, uh, provision and so on, okay? or additional income. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for all the information. I think our goal is, let's say, to to uh, keep the weeds, you know, let's say to uh, to to make a competition to weeds, and let's say to sustain the the, the yields, you know, not to increase and just to uh, just to control the weed, and uh, yeah, to um, to use the sandwich system. Uh, if I can have uh, one more question. Sure. Uh, um, uh, you are very well oriented in this. Uh, so, could you tell me why the why the sandwich system is not more spread? Let's say in organic growing and throughout the Europe, uh, even in standard uh, orchards and so on. Because, uh, yeah, I don't have uh, let's say many uh, own uh, experiences, but I I see that it could be really a pretty good solution. Uh, yeah. Combining, uh, let's say, the living mulches and and uh, and uh, advantages of cultivation in both systems. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, organic and uh, and integrated yeah. one. Is anybody willing to say something? So I can start maybe also something to add um, before you ask some species. So a species that was also quite successful was Potentilla reptans. I don't know if it's present in in your situation. It's it's omnipresent in Switzerland. In Feeble, it's 
it was quite dominant also over uh, other plant species that we were testing. It's as Claude Eric said, I think it's also important that you have a, a plant species that is not too high. So it's 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 not not very high. It has more or less shallow root system. So maybe this would also be something you could try. try. Mm -hmm. Maybe now to your question concerning the sandwip system, because it was yeah, it was was started at Feeble Switzerland a long time ago. I think it was also in the times when yeah some machines were not available so the, the people were also looking for some solutions uh, they had some sm some machines where they could um, yeah um, incorporate the soil beside the trunks but not within the trunks and now there was quite um, some new machines that are available uh, on the market so i think this is also maybe a, a little bit the reason that the people they hold uh, the whole plant um, row and also maybe they also have some fear of of, of walls for example mm -hmm. and i also think at the beginning of um when you start and plant the three rows i think then it's also quite some competition for the for the young plants if you then already mm -hmm. start with the sandwich system i would also be a little bit yeah really uh, look uh, precise um I don't know what what the reason could be. Maybe also some some fears concerning maybe the the fertilization of the trees. Yeah, but we we also observe in Switzerland uh, that the sandwich system is it's used for some at some farms. They are really they they like it, but um, most of the farmers they really hold the uh, the whole width of the of the plant row because they also have, I think most farmers they use the the Ladurner machine which is quite good it's of course it's not you cannot uh, drive very fast with this system so this is of course a uh, constraint of this um that one machine concerning um other machines here but i don't know if Claude uh, yeah. if you want to add yeah, i think i think that maybe it's also easier if you if you have the whole uh, row you know with the with the either one or a mixture as i think it's normally much better much better than only the single as also Roderick was presenting you know i mean if you have a mixture of of a leguminous plant and, and, gra and the grass it's then better then it's easier i mean why you want to make something which is a kind of uh, 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 let's say non natural you know it's because you know you want to keep the, the different parts of the sandwich let's say separate but the plants uh, they grow wherever they want, you know, and they wherever. so probably it is also easier to 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 have it uh, as a general mixture than uh, you know than uh, than only as separate. Okay, could be and easier for the farmers also to keep it. Uh, um, yes, it, um, it's interesting uh, to to the interest. One of the interest to to mix uh, several species is. Uh, to uh, <clears throat> to mix species which can develop very quickly at the beginning when you sow them or when you plant them and after uh, to have plant that uh, can uh, develop uh, later and they uh, for example festuca they are uh, when they are well uh, implanted uh, on the tree row they um, don't <laughs> move they stay it's really the ground the, the ground cover is really uh, nice and important, but uh, you have to wait uh, two or three years. And uh, so during that time, it's nice to have another species who develop more quickly. Um, so it's a uh, one point. And concerning the, um, the sandwich system, it's a, uh, I have no more, re, uh, no more uh, other explanation than uh, uh, Michael uh, freely said uh, concerning the development of this system. One of, I, I think one of the one thing to consider is uh, the price of the investment of the machine to for a farmer to 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 manage the soil. It's a uh, an important uh, cost and uh, the tools uh, uh, when you have it uh, you want to keep it for a long time so i think um, the modification of the of the, uh, of the practice concerning the soil management it's probably uh, it's uh, to uh, uh, long term effect because of the price of the investis investment of the tools 
And uh, now we have nice new tools which can be interesting in some case, but not in the other case. But for 95% uh, of the farmer, it's not possible to find uh, four tools to, to have the best uh, management of their, uh, of their orchid. So they, they buy one or they share one with other and they do everything with that. So <laughs> I think it's a, a, an argument to explain. It's a reason to explain why it's also difficult to introduce um, uh, cover crops in, in systems. You have drawbacks, you have some sometime risk, but uh, you if we want to manage the cover crop properly, sometimes you have to find tools which could uh, be um, difficult or expensive. And from a farmer point of view, it can be a, a limitation, of course. But uh, for I think it's all, of course it's more easy in experimental station or we this is how we're all to to try to to innovate and to try many different things, but uh, it's, it's still uh, um, it's it will still need time to be uh, um, included in, in the practice because of the price of the investment and because of also the the risk and to consider and uh, and still the reference we need to have for different, uh, in different conditions. Thank you, Roderick. I don't know if Hans Peter wants to say something or not on the video. Yes, thank you. Good morning. We are operating a small farm in Puglia in the south of Italy. And we have just recently planted two hectares of uh, pomegranates. And I have seen that in all your projects, you have spoken about apple, pear, uh, about grapes. I was wondering whether there is any experience in uh, pomegranate um, planting and, and using uh, living mulch in uh, such, a, such a context. Uh, we don't have this experience, but uh, we will discuss about that uh, during the general discussion, because uh, actually uh, Vincenzo, which is now, let's say, leading the other room, uh, is from Puglia, and he is, is working also with pomegranate. So we will ask him to, to give you some, some, uh, some information. I believe that uh, I, I have only a, a little uh, experience uh, with the pomegranate growing while I was in Jordan. And to me, it was a kind of a really uh, surprise because uh, uh, I was used to have uh, eating only one kind of pomegranate, which I didn't like because it was so acid that, you know, that. And then there I found that there is a, a whole palette of, uh, of uh, colors uh, of, the, of the fruit. I mean, not of the fruit, but inside of the seeds, what you are eating and the pulp uh, and the whole palette also of uh, taste. So from very acidic to very sweet. Um, I know that now there is a, a there is a kind of uh, there was a colleague that was in Bari actually working, but he was not working on soil on soil management. He was working on, on genetics actually. So, uh, but we'll ask uh, Vincenzo. I believe that he can he can tell you what kind of uh, eventual cover crops could be suitable for those for those conditions that, that you have in your farm. Yeah, and then possibly if there is. If there is a, an interest of, of other farmers or of uh, one institute or another, where we could uh, where we could cooperate. The second question, if <clears throat> if I may, uh, I I hear mainly talk about uh, living mulches in three rows. What about the the inter row? Uh, is, are there any, any interesting recommendations for the interro uh, with uh, effects on ultimately on the main crop, of course? Sure, sure. Claudéric, you want to say something about it? Because I think you had experience. I mean, we had also these trials within the domino with the palm fruits. Uh, so, so the, as you said, the, the interrot or growing different kinds of uh, general leguminous species or mixture 
of the grass and a leguminous species. We had actually uh, quite good results. One out of three different uh, uh, methods that we used because we, we wanted also to try different uh, leguminous species that were suggested to us by the, 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 the colleagues that are working only on this because they use them as a, as a fodder plant, okay? So for, for uh, animal uh, feeding, uh, but it was not successful. But in, in our case, for example, the mixture of uh, uh, Festuca ovina, which is a grass which is, which is growing not so high, and uh, uh, with the micro clover, so which is a trefolium repens, it's an ecotype that grows very little, and with very little leaves and so on. They were establishing very well uh, together. They were covering very well the, the inter row. And, uh, and actually we, we used also them because at the beginning the idea was to use this as a additional source of nutrients for the tree. So cutting them, mowing them, and then putting the, the, the material, the organic material on the tree row. Uh, that was we then I mean we didn't have the possibility to do it for long years because it, it, uh, it, we were able let's say to provide a sufficient amount of uh, organic matter only at the very end of the project we are going to test in the next years but for example in Germany uh, they, the way they were using a different approach so using for example sowing peas in the winter time and then in springtime, uh, so peas in the in the inter row or near, not the whole inter row, but uh, let's say more closer to the tree row, and then cutting and, and uh, putting on the on the row to to provide additional source of uh, of nutrients, let's say generally speaking, but also for for the for the nitrogen directly fixed in the soil. Uh, so this this could this uh, I mean again uh, in the conditions that, that you that you have which i believe are more similar to what claude Rick has, can, can also tell in the south part of of france you know uh, because, i mean now in puglia it's a, it's a, it's an opposite situation because we have in the northern part of italy there is a drought uh, and and the, in the southern part of italy it's raining more than, than that's crazy. right yeah. Yeah. yeah so maybe you will have to adapt uh, the same uh, con i mean the same solutions that we were used to use north of italy or the northern part of, uh, of europe uh, yeah no? in um, our uh, uh, trial uh, the um, well, um, it depends. In fact, when you grow um, a cover crop uh, in the between the tree row, if you want to cut it to to put it uh, as a mulch, or if you want to bury to incorporate it in the soil, and uh, if you want to cut it and just use it as a as a mulch, uh, you need to have um, um, enough uh, materials, enough uh, fresh matter cut to have a mulch effect and um, I, we have not performed a trial like that in um, Adra, but I remember that some colleagues told me that uh, who has tried this technique that uh, you really need to have uh, enough uh, quantity of um, cover crop of fresh matter to have really a, a mulch effect. And if you want to, to incorporate, to bury in the soil, um, leguminous for the uh, nitrogen uh, effect release. Um, we have tried this and uh, it was difficult the first year. We had difficulty to bury uh, properly the, um, the, the leguminous in the soil to incorporate it properly. And uh, now in the frame of uh, another European project, uh, Bio architect with <laughs> also with Elisio, uh, we will try another method with a um, tool a machine uh, dedicated to this, which able to cut on the the crop on the in the cover crop in the inter row and to put it automatically on the on the row. Oh. Uh, we'll start. We will start it. Uh, we will start the trial. Uh, 
this year, so we <laughs> do not have a result yet. But um, many, yes, there is a high degree of innovation concerning machine for the soil management. So it's still possible to imagine nice things, but uh, for the moment it's still um, under experimental experimentation. <laughs> but I, I, I see that also Michel Fontaine uh, uh, said something concerning uh, a PhD concerning this on the chat, <laughs> a reference. Okay, so that might be useful for Hans um, just to have a look at. I don't think the PhD student got around to properly publishing, but I think the information's in one of the chapters of his thesis. Thank you. I take the opportunity to, to answer to Carlos Gil, who sent me a question by the chat. Um, about the the management of uh, the cover crop <laughs> to uh, in order to maintain the maximum arthropod biodiversity in the orchard. Uh, it's a good question, but I have not uh, probably the right answer. Um, we it's we we have assessed um, we we have not really assessed the effect of different kind of management. But of course, the management is a really a big uh, issue when you want to when you want to cut the pattern on the uh, on the on the tree row. And uh, what I can say is that, for example, we have um, seen that in the uh, example of uh, white clover cover crop, the effect of uh, the um, rhythm of irrigation. For to have the best um, development of uh, white clover, in fact, we have to uh, divide it, uh, water supply uh, in two periods. One, uh, lo a longer period for the trees to for the water to have time to go more deeper in the soil, and one um, and several short period um, uh, more uh, focused for the development of uh, the white clover. And we have, uh, it takes time to, to find the best uh, combination of that, but uh, it's an e example of uh, practices, for example, who needs to be uh, adapted when you grow some cover crop. And we have, um, in our condition, most of the time we have, time, we have tried to, to cut um, uh, the, uh, uh, we are, we, 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 if we have a, um, as I said, if we have a pro, uh, uh, possible uh, effect of a hair rig on, on stone fruit, etc., we try to, to cut and to maintain the, the, the cover crops not too high. And uh, if not, for um, apple, for example, we leave the, um, the development of the cover crops uh, without cutting it. But uh, we perhaps in the next uh, year we will also try to to um, to assess different kind of of management of management because of course it's uh, it's really uh, the effect of the cover crops really depends on the management of it. So, but we have so many things to to assess at the same time. The, so, so many factors to to play with. So. For the moment, we have not really assessed this, but it's uh, it could be interesting to to try different pattern of different height of cuts or many things to do. Still, <laughs> if I, if I can add just one suggestion, which which doesn't come from experience, let's say, but comes from my studies when I still was a student, you know, and and I had the, the course on on. Uh, um, on the meadows, you know, so the, the, the management for, for feed production, feedstuff production. And actually, this came, uh, you know, reading what, what uh, Gil was, was writing, I mean, about the grass, grasses phenology. I mean, not, I remember that, for example, when they were suggesting, because also for feed management, uh, so the, the, the meadows uh, should be mixed. So there is a, always a grass and the legumes. To say you know the first cut which is in may normally you have the best cut because there is the, the the biggest amount of leguminous plant 
because they grow much faster. Why? Because it's at the beginning of the season, there is normally, let's say, normally, a higher uh, moisture in the soil, so the, the water content in the soil. And then you have the second, and eventually then the third cut, where you have a majority of the biomass, which is made of the grasses, because they can resist much more better the, 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 the decrease in the, in, the, in the soil water content, and then also grow and, and, and in this way, you know, you can have a balance. So I think that the same could happen also, and you could apply also for the, in your case. So if you want to have this, uh, um, this either on the row or the inter row also. So you, you really need to, to consider as also very, was mentioned, different kinds of factors that are, that are affecting the, the growth of the plant. If there are no other questions, then uh, I will tell Vincenzo that we can stop the session and we can go to uh, to the main to the main room, so we can have a, a final discussion and we'll ask uh, also Vincenzo to answer to Hans Peter about the the pomegranate. So thank you very much for attending this session and see you on the other one. So we, we just have to, to wait. We, we... Is, is, I think we can click on the bottom. There is, a, there is leave room, but he says that that is closing in a in few seconds now, I would say. Let's try. And you just click on leave breakout room and you should go to the other one.